What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today I am very excited to be opening up a pack of Ice Age not something that we get to open very often But uh, obviously it's older. It's gonna be a lot of fun to look at these old cards So uh, of course we're gonna go through this as if it is a pack one pick one environment if we were drafting this set so hopefully uh, we can figure out what our pack one pick one would actually be uh, That being said I did not draft during this time. I have no clue what the good cards are I also have no idea what the rare is so we'll hopefully get to see something awesome, but really I have no idea so Whalebone glider is our first card. It's an artifact for two of any color You can pay two of any color and tap it and target creature with power uh, with power Excuse me no greater than three gains flying until the end of the turn other effects may later be used to increase that creatures power beyond three i love old cards when they specify certain things like that uh, obviously today's cards do not have anything like that but uh, this is a really interesting one i don't really like it too much uh, it gives some low power stuff flying which can certainly be useful it can get you around uh, give some evasion get you around some blockers on the ground I like that, uh, but it seems a little expensive for that. Two mana and then two other mana and tapping this means you can only do it one once per turn and you have to invest at least two mana a turn just to use it. So kind of don't like it for that reason, so not super exciting there. Uh, melting, it's an enchantment for three and a red. All snow covered lands become non snow covered lands of the same type. Uh, so if you didn't play during this time, uh, there were snow covered lands in this set uh, that was specific to this and I believe they brought it back for another set at one point, uh, maybe cold snap, uh, but uh, snow covered lands had specific abilities. Some cards needed snow co covered lands to actually be used. Uh, and so cards like this are really hate cards against those snow covered lands, which is perfectly fine. However, it's a little too specific, especially for limited uh, snow covered lands are not necessarily the most prominent thing in limited, though I'm sure there are certain instances where they will be used. Uh, but this just doesn't seem all that exciting to me. Definitely not the card I'm interested in. <laughs> Uh, Venomous Breath is an instant for three and a green at the end of combat destroy all creatures blocking or blocked by target creature this turn uh, So kind of interesting. It's similar to like death touch, but for four mana that seems a lot uh, Just to basically kill a creature uh, and you already are so limited on when you can use this It has to be blocked or be blocking a creature uh, and that just it seems really really specific uh, I'd rather just have a stronger creature at four uh, or a more board impactful kind of play. Uh, while this definitely has some corner cases for its use, I don't think it's the best, uh, and so not super excited there. So far, uh, Whalebone Glider seems to be in the lead, but uh, we do have Celestial Sword. I'm guessing this is the rare, that's just my thought. Uh, it is an artifact for six mana, so pretty expensive, but you can pay three and tap it. Target creature you control gets plus three, plus three until the end of the turn. At the end of that turn, you bury that creature, which uh, if you didn't know, that just means destroy that creature. So uh, this is really interesting. So it's repeated uh, pumps for, I mean, once every turn at least, uh, for your creatures, which is good. It can give some value to some of your low value uh, creatures. So if you played an early drop that maybe got outpowered, this is a good way in the late game to maybe give it a little bit of a boost, which is fine. Uh, but you do still have to kill the creature at the end of the turn, and I kind of don't like that. Uh, I do like the ability to power stuff up, and it probably is better than some of the other cards that we're going to see, obviously. But uh, I'm not sure that I'm on board with it. I'm going to keep it in this pile for now, but we'll see. Uh, Gaze of Pain is a sorcery for one and a black. Uh, for each creature you control that attacks and is not blocked, you may choose to have it deal no combat damage to the defending player this turn. If you do so, it instead deals damage equal to its power to any creature. So that's a really interesting card. The downside of this is it's a sorcery, so your opponent can play around it uh, completely. Uh, you have to play this on your main phase one before you attack, uh, and then if something is not blocked, they can kind of deal around it. I don't really like that. That means you're giving your opponent a big choice, uh, which I think is just such a bad decision. So this seems like a really bad card to me. Uh, Arctic Foxes is a 1-1 for 1 and a white. Uh, if the defending player controls any snow-covered lands, no creature with power one uh, with power greater than 1 may be assigned to block the Arctic Foxes. So. Uh, it is conditional, but uh, in certain circumstances, this is an unblockable 1-1 one, one for 2. Uh, not super exciting in my opinion. I don't know how often snow-covered lands will actually be played in a limited environment with this set, uh, but it just doesn't seem all that exciting. So for me, this is definitely a pass. 
Uh, Aronson's Aura, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is an enchantment for two and a white. You can pay a white and sacrifice an enchantment to destroy target enchantment. And then you can pay three and two blue to counter target enchantment. So this is very, very enchantment hate heavy, uh, which is interesting. I don't really like this card. I think this is bad and limited. There are actually instances where in like commander or something, this would be great. But honestly, this is just so specific to enchantments that it just doesn't seem all that good. Uh, Baldovian Bears is a 2-2 for one and a green vanilla creature. It's the classic grizzly bear card. Uh, honestly, not bad though. Uh, it's a 2-2 for two. And honestly, back in the days where creatures were not the best, uh, just in general, in terms of like CMC to power and uh, toughness, this is actually just pretty on par and pretty good. Uh, so it's not the most amazing, most exciting thing in the world, but it's actually not bad. So. Uh, I don't think it's better than the cards that we've got here, uh, but yeah, it just, it seems bad. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's just a bear. Uh, counter spell classic, uh, two blue for counter target spell. Uh, it is an instant, obviously. This is actually a really, really powerful card, one that I would definitely love to have uh, in any set, really. Uh, this is just a super, super efficient way of countering anything that your opponent plays. Because it's not conditional, it makes it really, really good in any situation. I know a lot of days now we see things like Negate versus Essence Scatter. Those are kind of the two classic ones we always see. Essence Scatter in Limited is way, way better uh, because creatures are much more prominent than regular spells or anything like that. And so Negate is much more of like a sideboard option, but it's still a good one to have. Being able to combine those, basically be able to counter anything for the same cost is pretty awesome. Yes, it does need to be two blue, not one in a blue, but uh, generally that's not too difficult to get. So I actually really like this card. I'm gonna keep it here for now. I'm also uh, going to take out the Will uh, Bone Glider. I don't think that that would be my pick. Uh, more Fiend. Uh, is a 3-3 for three and a black, and it has Swamp Walk. So if you don't know what that is, uh, it's actually an outdated term now, but Swamp Walk uh, basically means that if the defending player controls a swamp, this creature is unblockable. Uh, so essentially, this is a conditionally unblockable 3-3 three, three for four. Uh, obviously, a lot of the time, it's just going to be a 3-3 three, three for four. Uh, but honestly, again, not bad. Uh, on this In this time period, creatures were not quite as powerful as they necessarily are now. And so a 3-3 three, three for four, not the worst thing in the world. Still don't like it more than the other cards that we've got, but it isn't bad. Uh... Or shade, I hope I'm saying that correctly. I don't really know. It's a one, two for three and a black and you can pay a black and it gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Obviously you can do that as many times as you'd like, which is why this card is actually okay. Uh, normally I don't like cards like this because they're a little bit too expensive. You can invest a lot of mana and then they could just kind of kill the creature outright and then you kind of lose a turn. So you open yourself up to something like that. It is a little expensive at four mana for a one two, obviously. Uh, but on the next turn, presumably, you'll be able to pay a decent amount of mana to, to pump it up a good bit. So if you really need to, that's good. It's not a bad card to have if it's the last card in your hand. That's kind of the way I think about this. If you've got other plays that could come up that might actually be more beneficial than pumping this up, it's a little bit difficult because you put yourself into a situation where you don't really know what the best play is. And obviously you're making judgments based on the board, but sometimes, you know, the opponent has a kill spell, the opponent has a counter spell, so you could very easily choose the wrong path. That's why I don't generally like these shade cards that come up like this, uh, just because they kind of put you into those situations. I don't think I like it better than any of the other cards we have already pulled out anyway, but this is not as bad in this set, uh, in my opinion. Uh, snow Devil is an enchant creature for one and a blue. Target creature gains flying. As long as you control any snow covered lands, that creature also gains first strike when blocking. Uh, only when blocking, not when it's attacking, uh, just to clarify. Uh, this just seems really bad. Uh, it's the classic two for one with the enchant creatures, and this doesn't give enough of a buff, uh, in my opinion. Flying's pretty good. That kind of uh, gives some uh, like evasiveness, so you might be able to get it to like the unblockable standpoint, depending on what the opponent has. Uh, the first strike is like okay, uh, obviously if you're giving it flying though, that kind of makes you want to be a little more aggressive, uh, at least in my opinion, so I'm not a fan of this card, I just think it's quite bad. 
Uh, Stone Rain, a very classic card. It's a sorcery for two and a red. Destroy target land. Uh, not good and limited. There's just no reason to play this. Uh, but there are also constructed decks that love stuff like this. Land destruction is a very, very cruel way to play. Uh, but it is powerful. It's very, very good. So uh, cards like this, while not good and limited, because most of the time you're just going to be playing basic lands, uh, they are very good and constructed in certain cases. Uh, Clairvoyance is our last, oh, next to last card, excuse me. We do have, it's an instant for one blue. Look at target player's hand and draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Uh, very reminiscent of like Mishra's Bobble, kind of, uh, except you look at the hand instead of the top card of the deck. I think this is just kind of a card that you slot in if you need it. Uh, it's not the most powerful card in the world. If you're in blue, it's not bad. It's very cheap, it's very efficient, and it draws you a card, which is great. Uh, but in general, not the most exciting thing. It's one that I would pick up later if I needed it or if I just needed to, to fill out a deck. And then Warning is our last card. It's an instant for one white. Target attacking creature deals no combat damage uh, in combat this turn. Don't really like cards like this. I've talked about preventative cards before. They kind of just are stall cards unlimited. You want to be doing more to affect the board, be much more proactive. And so cards like Warning and other kind of preventative cards that save you some damage or fog effects, things like that, just not very exciting in my opinion. I do not like that. Uh, I do think it's between the sword and counter spell. Counter spell is fantastic. It's always going to be good. You will find a target for it as long as you can play it for sure. The sword, also kind of like though, uh, I, I know I kind of was down on it when I initially read it, but I feel like because it gives value to your low ground creatures, I kind of like it. Uh, so I think I would do, I would go with the sword. It's a little late game, obviously. Counterspell is going to be good throughout most of the game. Uh, so that might be definitely the safer pick, but Celestial Sword, I think, has my vote. So that's what I vote. Uh, please feel free to disagree with me in the comment section below. I do think it's between Counterspell and the sword for sure but that's just my opinion. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.